Why, Houston, the beauty of this place is just absolutely incredible. I have never seen it. <laughs> All I can say is spectacular, and I know y'all are sick of that word, but that, my vocabulary is so limited. The obvious next step after Apollo was to send people to Mars. And we didn't send anyone after that to the moon or Mars or anything. If you'd asked people in 1969 what would 2013 look like, they would have said there'll be a base on the moon, we would have at least sent some people to Mars. A groundbreaking discovery could mean future human colonies on Mars are possible. Scientists say a huge lake of salty water appears to be buried beneath the surface of the red planet. Many scientists hope the discovery means Mars has other hidden bodies of water. So there's oceans of water. I mean, the topsoil is full of water on Mars. It's water is hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen to breathe, hydrogen and oxygen makes fuel. So that's a huge resource. Mars was once a warm and wet planet. It had liquid water on its surface for more than a billion years. So if the theory is correct that life is a natural development from chemistry, life should have appeared on Mars even if it subsequently went extinct. And if we can go to Mars and find fossils of past life, we'll have proven the development of life is a general phenomenon in the universe. Creating a self-sustaining civilization on Mars it would be the greatest adventure ever, ever in human history. Right now, you cannot go to Mars for infinite money. We have to figure out how to improve the cost by 5 million percent. And it sounds like virtually impossible, but I think there are ways to do it. There are places on Mars that you could just about have liquid water. It can be 20 degrees Celsius, warmer than Minnesota. So there are places where it's not horrendous on Mars. There are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that. Um, because those guys are, yeah, you know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. The critical breakthrough that's necessary is a rapidly reusable orbital rocket. Humanity landing on the moon, man, that was maybe the greatest thing ever. So I can't believe we're launching from that pad. The Holy Grail is 100% affordable reusability, where you don't have to spend like a gazillion dollars refurbishing it. We will get that Holy Grail with this starship that we're working on now. The Raptor engine will be the highest thrust weight engine, we believe, of any engine of any kind ever made. At least 100 people per trip is, is the right order of magnitude in order to reduce the cost per person. You send the spaceship up to orbit, you retank it or refill it, it travels to Mars, lands on Mars. You can use solar power to extract CO2 from the atmosphere, combine it with water, and produce fuel and oxygen for the rocket. This is a dangerous mission. <laughs> it's definitely dangerous. We're going to look back at 2020 there's a year that everything changed because this is the beginning of that infrastructure, that, that private sector commercial infrastructure and ability to actually get it done as long as we don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs>